Hello and welcome to another fictionalhead.com tutorial. Um, recently was asked what the deal is with doing the pen tool in it, Photoshop because it doesn't respond the way Illustrator does and you have people who sort of abandon Photoshop whenever they need to do something vector just because its pen tool is kind of dodgy. Uh, so I'm just going to give you some quick sort of hints here that I've picked up and the differences between the way the tools work and how you can become more familiar in using them. In Illustrator when you draw with the pen tool you get these tangent bars which really confuse people a lot of the time because it's kinda hard to make a curve you want a practical application for with these weird loopy things because it's like how would you make a mask or something for an angular building if everything you're dealing with has these weird points. Uh, the way around that in Illustrator, as you probably know or don't know, is you click the the middle of the point once you've drawn it and you see that that extra tangent bar that was here disappears and what that does is turns this point into a corner, not a curve. So the next point I click comes directly out of that point. You see that now it comes out at a weird angle, whereas if I tried to draw that on its own without clicking off that point and I come back you get this which is undesirable 90 percent of the time so that said um, I find myself I know a lot of other people do when you're drawing things in Illustrator you just constantly are clicking to get rid of that middle point because it's I don't know dealing with these tangents all the time is just annoying. It seems like that should be the default action to not have that point and then you should have to click it to get one but whatever. So knowing that that's how the pen tool operates in Illustrator a lot of people come into Photoshop and I just jumped there I'm in Photoshop now that when you start drawing with the Photoshop one you go to click off that middle point and you can't so people are then left with these weird tangent bars and they hate them and they can't use Photoshop. What you do is you just alt click it. Um, on a Mac that's probably option. I don't have a Mac keyboard in front of me and I always confuse those keys. But you'll see that when you start drawing with the pen tool, if I get rid of the shape here, that when I get to that middle point, if, as soon as I hold down Alt, my cursor switches from uh, the pen tool with the line next to it to the pen tool with the pointy triangle thing next to it. That tells you that it's going to get rid of that point, and then you can continue on just the same way you do in Illustrator, getting rid of that middle point for more precise curves. The other thing that trips up a lot of people in the way that Photoshop operates is that this fill color is almost it's constantly full you can't pick a non-fill at least not elegantly in Photoshop so you can either switch your um, color here to like white so then you don't see it I mean it, it, you have to switch it here because this one's already drawn but then the problem you have is that it's still filling, you just can't see it, and that's not really helpful. A lot of the time when people draw, say, a clipping mask, and I'm just going to use this image again. Say I was going to clip out this thing here, this box. I start drawing it in Photoshop to get a clipping path. I mean, a more realistic application would be clipping out a sign or something for a display you start going like this and then it's filling and you can't see what you're trying to clip. What you do here, at least quick workaround, is that all you have to do is make the thing you're clipping a layer and then put your path below it. And now you'll see that while you're working on your path you still see the image just as you would in Illustrator if you were doing something with no fill. Just a quick workaround. Um, in terms of building really complex things in Photoshop where you have hundreds of vector layers and stuff, I would just avoid that if I were you. Um, you can draw your shapes how you normally would and then under your paths tab 
as soon as you hit the little arrow and hit save path and it names it, then it becomes more like a path in Illustrator where you can have compound um, compound objects such as like an O is a compound object because it's a path with another path inside of it. Um, I'll go back to my other document and show you here. If I was drawing this, like let's say I'm making an O, and I go like this, in Photoshop if I wanted to make the middle part of that O, I would start to make it and then you see it starts forming a new path and you're like, what am I supposed to do? Thing is, is once you get your initial path, this, the outer shape, you go to your paths tab, save it, and you can name it whatever you want. Um, in InDesign it'll it'll be applicable if you name it it'll ask you what your path is by name then once it's a path and you have it in Photoshop as a path then if I start drawing while I'm in this path here you'll see that now I have it's a compound path it's allowing me to do a path within a path without starting a new one so that way if I go into my paths and I'm like I control click it you can see that I selected just that part so if I let me pick a color here if I fill that now I get this compound path I don't get just an O and then another path with a, the inside O and then I have to knock them out manually it's a big hassle uh, the final thing you can do when working between these two programs if you're having issues with paths and stuff is say you're drawing this wonderful illustration and you get it to where you like it in Illustrator, you can just copy your path in Illustrator, go to Photoshop, paste, and then when it comes in here, it's going to ask you, do you want a smart object, pixels, path, or shape layer? Just pick path, and there you go. Well, I only had a little snippet grabbed, apparently. Grab the whole path, copy, paste, pick path, and there you go there's all your points and everything and you can just manipulate them as you would normally and under your path tab you'll see that you have a work path and you can save it the same way we did with the previous one and then once it's saved you can bend the points move the points same thing so like in terms of Illustrator say I open Illustrator and I have some really crazy complex um, illustration I think I know I've got a couple of them here. Uh, let me open one of these. Illustrations. There we go. So with this, looking at... Um, this is one I did of Battle Chasers. You can see that we have, like thousands of paths. You wouldn't want to be doing something of this complexity in, in Photoshop, so I'm not sure if people's problems with Photoshop are because they're trying to do stuff like this. If you are, just use Illustrator, because pulling off something of this complexity with layers and stuff in paths in Photoshop, you're going to be having migraines for weeks. Whereas in Illustrator, you can just break out the elements you want, save line work, save color, save shading, it's way easier. And if at last resort you need to do this, just jump into Photoshop, paste it in there, open your Illustrator file in Photoshop, something of that nature. So, um, I hope that was helpful in terms of why the pen tool is a little bit weird in Photoshop. Uh, maybe in later versions they'll integrate it a little more. Uh, otherwise, just click off your middle point or resort to Illustrator. Hope it was helpful.